Welcome to Be Free, where faith and forgiveness leads to freedom. I'm Ashley Gronholm, and today we're going to be talking about what it means to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to start with just a few questions. How do you know if you are truly accepted by God and going to heaven? Do you base your confidence upon your belief that you're good because you go to church or you do good things for God? Do you rely upon your good behavior or your righteousness to be saved? Do you follow a list of rules or rituals or regulations that qualify you to be worthy of God's love? Do you believe God will stop loving you if you sin? Here's the, the real truth of the matter. God's love for you is unconditional. That means it doesn't change. And it's not based on your good behavior, your perfect religious behavior. Actually, your right standing with God or your righteousness with God relies upon your faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. That is the key that will set you free from religious rule-keeping burnout in trying to be good when all the while God loves you because of what His Son, Jesus Christ, did for you and for me. See, that's the amazing, the amazing realization is that God's love, it runs so deep, as deep as the deep waters of the ocean, as scripture says, God, his love runs so deep. In fact, deep calls to deep. The deep love of God calls to the very depths of your soul. And he wants to set you free. He knew that this world would wear you out, burn you out, and fail you in most every way. And that only through knowing Jesus could we ever get free and be able to rest in trusting Jesus with everything. Our entire lives, our salvation is secure when we have faith in Jesus Christ. Why? How could that be? If you're asking that, I want to answer that question for you today. And I love, I love teaching on this so much. I love sharing about this topic so much because it's really part of my story. See, I came from a religious background that was so intense, so many rules, so many regulations, so many qualifiers that you ended up being exhausted, worn out, and burnt out. And really at the end of the day, there was no guarantee that all of that efforting and striving would, would accomplish the goal because there was always that question in the back of your mind. Well, what if I fail? What if I fall down? What if I sin? What if something happens and God stops loving me? That was always the pressure, the pressure point, if you will, that would be applied when that type of religious thinking could cause you to get discouraged or go into fear, wondering if God would change his mind about you or me. So I'm here to tell you today that God doesn't change his mind. In fact, God is not a man that he could lie or should lie, nor one who would need to repent. He keeps his word and he's faithful. So what about you? Do you want to know God in the way that I'm talking about? And do you have a desire to have a personal relationship with him? So if you do, then you're in the right place today because I'm going to tell you today exactly how you can do that. Maybe you've been wondering, you know, where to begin? God tells us in John 3, 3, that we can know him. We can know God 
through his son, Jesus Christ, whom God sent to the world so we could have relationship with the father. In fact, God created us for that very purpose to have relationship with him. And we can know God through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why it's so important that rather than wrapping our whole religious experience around a specific religion, it's more important that we know Jesus Christ because he is God. And you know, some religions don't even teach that. Some religions don't even exalt the name of Jesus. But we know in scripture that Jesus is God. He's one with the Father and one with the Holy Spirit. And really the truth is that unless you know Jesus, you're just practicing religion. You're just following a set of rules. Well, what do you do if something happens to you in life and there's no pattern, there's no formula, there's no rule or set of rules to wrap around that experience to guide you? For, let me give you an example. Let's say that a terrible thing happens and you find yourself walking through a divorce or a child that you dearly love decides to leave God and go into deep rebellion and sin. Or what if there's a loved one who has gone home to the Lord and you don't understand why the circumstances around that were permitted to happen? See, these are the harder, harder questions of life. These are the questions that keep us up at night and cause us to have burning questions, needing answers from God. But if your whole faith is based upon a religious system, then when it comes time to really hear from God, you may not know how to do that. In fact, some religious systems want us to rely completely on a religious leader, a pastor, or a reverend, or an apostle, or a bishop, or whatever that denomination calls that person. Sometimes they want you to overly rely on a person and their opinion as it is true that people can hear from God and certainly spiritual leaders should hear from God. But we as believers need to know how to hear from God ourselves so that when a terrible, difficult, troubling, stormy season of life comes your way, you won't sink. You'll be able to endure. So it's when we choose to surrender our lives to Jesus, when we say, God, I can't do it myself. I need your help. That's when we will experience his love because you'll be placing your faith in Jesus instead of in a religion or a person. And really that's where the journey begins. It begins with a relationship with Jesus. This knowing God begins with knowing Jesus because Jesus is the son of God and was sent to the world to die for our sins, was raised on the third day and even ascended back to heaven where the scripture tells us he is now interceding from the throne of God for you and for me. He's actually praying for us. He's standing and fighting for us. And all that he asks is that we'll call on the name of Jesus and be saved. Isn't that amazing? See, Jesus knew that the only way for us to ever have peace with God would be for him to be the sacrificial lamb, the blood sacrifice, as the scripture says, laying down his life so that you and I could be set free. And you know, maybe you don't know if you're someone, someone out there, you don't know the Bible and you're like, what are you, what are you talking about? Well, let me just tell you about the Old Testament for a minute. Because in the Old Testament in the Bible, God asked the priests, the high priest, to sacrifice a lamb and to shed the blood of a lamb on the mercy seat of the Holy of Holies in the, of the altar and upon the altar. And he did that. God did that so that we would see that prophetic act representing Jesus Christ when in the future Jesus would come and be 
and died for us, becoming that final sacrifice for sin. And that sacrifice, Jesus laying his life down for us, that finished the old covenant law. It completed it so that we no longer needed a high priest to go into the Holy of Holies and sacrifice a lamb for us so that we could be forgiven of sin. Now we can be forgiven of our sins just by placing our faith in Jesus Christ because he's the final sacrificial lamb. In the shedding of his blood on the cross, we are given the cleansing, sanctifying power through him to be declared holy. You see, it's not a church or religion that can make you holy. It's not living right that makes you holy, although we should want to live right if we love God. But knowing Jesus through faith and accepting his offering that he laid down his life for you, believing that he did that for you and receiving that, that is what makes you holy. Because the blood offering of Jesus Christ on the cross can then be applied to your sin, actually canceling the effects of your sin when Jesus died on the cross. It's an incredible miracle and it's a gift, a gift from heaven that Jesus was willing to do that for you and for me. So many people today are lost, broken, in desperate need of healing. Now more than ever, our world needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here at Be Free Ministry, we meet people in that broken place and we introduce them to Jesus, the only one who can bring restoration, healing, and true freedom. Through our international missions, our online Bible school, and our media ministry, we are reaching millions around the globe with the good news of Jesus Christ. Would you consider partnering with us to further our ministry's outreach? Your monthly gift of $25 could sponsor a pastor in Africa to join our school, or your monthly gift of $50 could bring much needed supplies to our orphanages in India and in Pakistan. Philippians 4.19 promises that when we give generously, God will generously supply all of our needs. To partner with us monthly or to give a one-time donation, visit our website at BeFreeInChristMinistry.org. I want to share with you a, a passage of scripture out of Isaiah 53, 1 through 6. And I love this passage because here we read about Jesus and what he actually did for us. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Now we're going to hear about Jesus. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form or comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And he, we hid our faces as it were from him. And he was despised and we esteemed him not. We didn't care. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's a powerful passage of scripture about what Jesus came to do for us and the effect that it had. Some of those words may seem foreign or a little different, hard to understand. So I want to break it down for you. Basically, Jesus came from heaven to live with us on earth. And while he was here, Jesus experienced some pretty difficult things. He was despised and rejected by everyone. Many, many despised and rejected him 
Only a few received him. He was a man of sorrow. He suffered every emotional, physical, you know, infirmity and difficulty, just like we did. He went through those things. He was a man of sorrow. He was acquainted with grief, grief, loved ones dying, people suffering. He saw that suffering. He experienced it himself. He was persecuted because he came telling the world that he was the son of man and the son of God. Regardless of what man did to him, he loved us unconditionally and he even died for us. He suffered or carried our griefs and our sorrows. He was wounded and he was beaten for our transgressions. That means sins. For our sins, he was wounded and he was beaten. He was punished or chastised for our sins while we remained in peace. And then by his stripes, we are healed. That word stripes refers to whippings or beatings. Jesus was whipped at a whipping post across his back. He was beaten. They nailed nails into his hands and his feet. They placed a crown of thorns that broke the skin in his forehead, causing him to bleed and, and to suffer. Can you imagine thorns being smashed into your forehead to the temple of your brow? He went through so much and then they hung him on a cruel cross and his blood was poured out for us, a final sacrifice for sin. You see, this is why knowing Jesus and what he did for you and me is so important because reality is that we could sit in a church our entire lives and never know him personally. We can't place our faith on, on someone else's belief. We can't Say, well, my mom and dad believe, so I'm good. I've been in a church all my life. I'm good. Um, I can quote every verse of the Bible. I'm good. I'm safe. I know God. The reality is you don't know God until you encounter Jesus Christ, who is one with God and sent by God. He is the, the final sacrificial lamb who died on the cross for you and for me. He's the living sacrifice for us so that we could be forgiven. This is why Jesus is actually called in the scripture, the great high priest, because he is the final sacrifice for sin. I want to read you the verses in scripture that tell us about this in Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in our time of need. See, that's what Jesus did for you and me. He is faithful and he is able to rescue you from the domain of darkness and transfer you into the kingdom of God's son. Why? Because he died for you. So God made a covenant with you when Jesus died, died for you on the cross. He made a covenant and God will not change his mind. When you believe in Jesus Christ by faith, you are sealed to God by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes into your body, which is the symbol of a temple where the Holy Spirit can inhabit and dwell because Jesus has ascended to heaven. He went back to God after being resurrected and promised to send us the Holy Spirit to help us, to protect us and to comfort us and to seal us to God. And he did it. 
He sent the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. In Acts 2, we read about that. And so we know that when the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles in the upper room on Pentecost, that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is the opportunity that you and I have today to believe in Jesus Christ and to be filled with the Holy Spirit sealing you to God. And it all happens by and through one word, faith. Faith in Jesus Christ makes all of this possible. That's why I say faith and forgiveness leads to freedom. Do you see? So God has guaranteed your inheritance in heaven and he has made a blood covenant relationship with you and he won't change his mind. He won't. This is why you can trust Jesus. This is why you've got to know that he will never fail you. He will never leave you or forsake you ever. He says, I won't leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Let's look at this wonderful paraphrase, paraphrased verse from Hebrews. It's so fantastic. Hebrews 9, 11 through 15. You're going to love this. But now Jesus, the anointed one, has become the king priest of every wonderful thing that has come. For he serves in a greater, more perfect heavenly tabernacle, not made by men. That is to say, not a part of this creation. Now that's talking about how Jesus has made a tabernacle in us. He's inhabiting us through the Holy Spirit, which he has sent. Verse 12, and he has entered once and forever into the holiest sanctuary of all, not with the blood of animal sacrifices, but with himself. That is the wonderful truth of Jesus Christ. Now I want to share one more verse with you of scripture, Hebrews 7, 18 and 19. For on the one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. Now that's about the old covenant, the old covenant, the old promises, what God had done through the old covenant. He had had those high priests go in and sacrifice the lamb. But when Jesus came, it was finished. Jesus finished that whole Levitical law. Verse 19, for the law made nothing perfect. See, if Jesus hadn't come, then we would have to have high priests sacrificing lambs again and again and again, shedding the blood of the animal in similitude or in representation of what Jesus was destined to do. So Jesus had to come and fulfill it. That's what it means. That's why we no longer practice the, all the Levitical laws of the Old Testament the Jewish laws of the old covenant because they've been fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Do you see? So nothing could be made perfect by that law. It would have to go on and on and on, but Jesus came and completed it. The word perfect means fully mature or complete. That's what Jesus did. And, and the scripture continues, on the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope, a better hope through which we draw near to God. And that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So I want to ask you today, is your relationship with God based on a religious ritual? Or is it based on relationship with Jesus? Do you want to know Jesus? If you do, today's your day to put your faith in him and choose to trust him with your life. Choose to trust him above and beyond every religion, every ritual, every single fleshly efforting and striving because you can't save yourself. Only Jesus can save you. So if you're, li if you're listening, if you're watching today, I want to pray for you. I hope you'll let me pray for you now that we could receive Jesus that you would receive him into your heart and be saved. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for the people who are watching today. I just thank you, Lord, for their, their heart and for their life. And I ask in the name of Jesus that they would choose today to place their faith in you, Jesus, 
And if you're watching, just, just pray this prayer with me. Father, I know that I've sinned and I know that I've trusted in myself and in others to be right with you. But today I want to receive the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. I want the blood of Jesus to be applied to my sin. I know that I've sinned. Thank you, Father, for providing Jesus as, as the final sacrifice to rescue me from my sin, to heal me, to cleanse me, and to set me free. I thank you, Father, for receiving me into your family. And I ask that you would seal me with the Holy Spirit now, that I would belong to you now and forevermore. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for sending Jesus. Help my faith to be strong. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That might have sounded different to you than other saving prayers, but I really felt today that that's what the Lord wanted me to pray for you. And I'm believing it as you understand that it's not religion that saves you, but Jesus Christ, that you will truly step into a newfound freedom and joy in the Lord. And remember, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And knowing Jesus will always give you joy. I pray that today has been a brand new day for you that you're a new creature in Christ Jesus today as you receive this truth. If you prayed that prayer with me and you'd like to receive my new book, Do You Know Me? A Revelation of Relationship, please go to my website at BeFreeInChristMinistry.org and we'll send you a copy. Tell us about your testimony. Tell us about what God did in your life today. I want to say it's a new day for you to be free. God bless you, and thank you so much for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Have a beautiful day.